up guys? If you've been following the YouTube channel, uh, you'll know that I just sold two strats, so pre-CBS strats, so I'm only left with my 59. It's really all I need, but as a, a predominant strat player, you always want a backup strat, you know? So <clears throat> I started going through like my parts bin and seeing what I had, maybe I could build something. I got enough parts to put a guitar together, so I'm basically gonna build a parts caster right now. Um, I wasn't necessarily gonna film it, but I sent a picture to my buddy Matt, Matthew Scott, and he said, dude, definitely film that. People will enjoy that. So maybe you will. Um, I had to buy a few things. I had to get a body and I had to get uh, an input jack, which I just found out is the wrong size. So luckily I had another one that does fit. But um, yeah, I'm gonna walk you through the parts that I have. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about them and then uh, we're gonna get putting this thing together so we can uh, have a backup strap. Good. All right, so first things first, uh, I did have to buy a body. You know what I mean? Um, I went with uh, <clears throat> an MJT body. Um, I've used the Telecaster bodies before, but I started reading up on these and they have, they're have they having these bodies uh, specially cut by Wildwood to vintage spec. And even there's little, cool little things in here like router marks and stuff like that. And uh, you know, they just kind of do like the channeling the right way. The pickup routes are a little bigger than, than the vintage ones just to accommodate uh, many different pickup brands. But the body's nice and lightweight. I think it weighs like three pounds, 10 ounces or something like that. And this color, I don't know if the camera's picking it up right, but it's a candy apple red. Now, uh, I'm super inspired by this color because uh, I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan, as we all are probably. And early on, some of those early uh, Hendrix shows, 67 is one of my favorite years for Jimi. He was playing a candy apple strat, a candy apple red strat that had multiple different necks on it. And it ended up being the guitar. Half of the guitar was white, half of it was red. Not the one that he sacrificed at Monterey. This is a Seville Theater guitar we're talking about here. But the Candy Apple Red is a super cool color. So uh, I was able to grab this body this week. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Also, uh, <clears throat> my buddy Sesco's Corner was just uh, posting up a 65 Strat recently in a beautiful Candy Apple Red. So I ended up just snagging this body recently. I think it was like 200 and change or something like that. And it was one of the only parts I really needed to have a whole guitar together. So I just grabbed this body. It just came in a little while ago. I sent the pictures to Matt and he was like, oh, dude, you got to film that. But they did some great aging. To me, that's tasteful because it doesn't look like, you know, I hate to say custom shop, but it doesn't look like custom shop. If you have, if you've ever spent time around old strats, that's how they flake off. They don't, they don't look like, uh, you know, Schwarzenegger shot it with a bazooka. It's just pretty much like that. Uh, and again, super lightweight, so you can probably see the color a little better right there. So yeah, here's the body we're going with. Don't adjust your screens. This is a, a neck built by my good buddy, Jesse Davey. Uh, I had this neck on a guitar previously and I ended up selling the guitar. So obviously the neck didn't go with it. Super nice slab here. Uh, it's a king tone neck with a reverse headstock. Amazing figuring on the piece of wood here. Dark, dark ebony fretboard, and it's already got 6,000 jumbo frets in it. And I put a set of tuners on it when I put it on that other guitar. So we're going to use this neck, and I already had this. So I didn't have to buy this or anything like that. This was just here. Here's the neck we're going to use. Super excited to put this on. Look at this thing. It's just got some crazy flamage to it. Now, I don't know if Jesse is building necks. So uh, you'd have to email him and ask him. But I'm, I don't know if that's really anything he's doing right now because... The pedals are just, you know, keeping him quite occupied. He's doing great. So this is a, this is a really cool piece too. So being a pre-CBS geek, um, I had uh, an actual 1960 complete pick guard assembly. Uh, if you, you remember my Instagram, I repaired this. When I got this, it had some real shoddy wiring in here, but one, two, three pickups are all original wiring. I had to replace the leads on the neck and the middle pickup. The bridge pickup was okay. Uh, it has three stack pole pots. They all work. It has a three-way switch. The only thing, you know, the problem is somebody put some dip switches in here. Again, you know, accommodating the uh, wiring they had attached over here. That's not a big deal. It's just a knock around guitar. So, you know, to, to really have pre-CBS pickups, black bobbins in there right now is really great because, you know, I'm procuring that old school tone. Um, of course, there are other pickups out there that will get you close, but just to have the real deal to me is, is really something special. So this is actually the prize of the guitar, probably a complete 1960 pickguard assembly. Now, this is the good stuff. This is my parts bin. We have, uh, I believe this is a custom shop uh, tremolo setup. 
uh, earlier today on my Instagram, I had uh, taken all the paint off this and uh, got this thing ready for this guitar. So we're going to use this. It needs a couple of saddles, but I can hunt those out and find that. So we have a 161608. This looks like it's a 67 neck plate, 1967 neck plate here. So we'll use that. We got the uh, we got neck screws here. Get those. We got a trim claw. Um, there's those two saddles I need right there. We got some tremolo springs, and this is the input jack I need. So if I'm looking at everything correctly, it looks like I have everything. Oh, and I have a bag of. Uh, these are actual pre-CBS pickguard screws as well. So I have those to go on here. Oh, and some strap buttons. Got a strap button there, strap button there. Let's see if we can find a proper screw. There's one there. This one there. We gotta find the custom shop tremolo screw. One, two, three, four, five. Lenny bar. Six, and then we need the claw screws. One other claw screw right there, bam. So with that, I've wiped out my, my parts bin, which is a good thing because it allows me to relieve myself of some junk. We're gonna get to assembling this guitar. Just use this rigid setup. Uh, I've had it going for years. Uh, it's just great for home use. You know, if you don't know how to use a drill, maybe learn. If you don't have one, buy one. It's a Weller soldering set. I really like this. It does the job. It's fully adjustable. You can control your heat range, which is great. <clears throat> Tape in case I need it. We got uh, a tip cleaner for the soldering iron and some solder. A couple of screwdrivers. Just different, different size uh, Phillips tips, you know. And... This little nut driver socket kit you can find at probably any hardware store. I think I got this at Walmart actually, but for a guitar repair guy, it's perfect. So we're going to get to assembling. Uh, I think I'm going to mount the neck on first and I'm going to do this really quick and, you know, probably get tore up on the internet, but hey, I love that stuff. You know, what are you going to do? Pretty snug in that neck joint there. So that's a good thing. That's what you want. I feel as though there's a lot of uh, tone transfer in a neck joint. I really like uh, that neck joint being as tight as possible, especially like on a Telecaster. That's some of the uh, the tone transfer right there. We got Stevie playing in the background, which is always cool. I think it's uh, it's on like an autoplay. So there we go, we got that, we got that. We got those four in. Now, I'm not going to go crazy tight on these because when we're going to center the strings after, we're going to want uh, to get some movement out of there. Sometimes you got to center the neck. I just use the two high, the two E strings as my centering indication. Some people use a uh, center line jig, and that's, that's perfectly great as well, but I just have my old school way of doing it. So, so I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys can see that, but right away we're already starting to look pretty cool. Get this bridge on here. I don't, uh, last time I think I used a drill on a guitar, somebody commented that I was crazy, but. I work with uh, hand tools all day, every day. I'm a mechanic and, you know, kind of control it. Not only that, the guitar is a relic, so. Builds for a good story, I guess. Okay, so, um, I, like I explained in my setup video last week, um, I like to use, I like to keep my bridge flush to the body. Now, here's a little tip if you guys are setting up a, a tremolo system and, you know, what I do is I get it so they're down and then I'll bring this screw in just till I see the bridge plate rise like that and I'll back it off a half a turn. Now, that means that <clears throat> I've sunk that screw flush. 
It's not binding, and for all intents and purposes, that tremolo is going to sit flush on the body. And I'll do that with all six of these now. I'll run down these. Just give it a test. It returns to the body. It's flush, it's flat. Yeah, these, I can tell you right now, these MJT bodies are definitely cut to vintage spec because if you look on the newer, like the, the other guys, the other company that's building Relic guitars, these uh, screws won't protrude through the back tremolo cavity, but these do a little bit slightly, just like the old strats did. Really, really cool to see that. Pretty sure that these springs are custom shop as well because I had got, I got a whole assembly, so that's what they would be for. Okay, so the bridge assembly's on, the neck is on, the claw's in. Like I said, tuners are already on, so that stuff's pretty straightforward. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna explain something to you guys. When I drilled this body for the pit guard, <clears throat> I drilled it with a, another uh, reissue 62 guard only because I wanted these holes to line up to a proper pit guard, but the old pit guards over time, they shrink and retract. So I'd rather fight the screws in the old guard and have the body drilled properly for any 62 style pit guard that I want to put on there when the time comes. Just this old, the old nitrate that the pit guards were made out of, they just warp over time and they shrink bad. I've had to fix a few. It's, it's not the most enjoyable thing. As far as fixing them too, I mean, just making them work. Okay, so we're not too, too bad. You know what I'll do too is sometimes when you're assembling, if you don't have the pickups up high enough, the guard won't want to sit flush. So we're gonna, I'm gonna adjust the pickups afterwards, but let me just make sure that's not the issue. Yeah, see, it sits a little flatter now. All right, we'll put our screws on. Trying to do this quick too. Yes, it's it's great to take your time and, and you know when it's something you want to be real passionate about, it's something you want to you know cross all your T's and dot your I's. You want to take your time. Something like this, I mean, I'm kind of familiar with putting together, so I'm not really worried about missing something. I I know what the task ahead of me. I know what I have to do. You know, so I'm just just chugging along. Starting to load a guitar now. Let me get some strap buttons in. Pre drilled these already as well. This one, this strap button right here at the bottom bow. I like to find the center line of the body. And this other one on the horn here, you just kind of match up. So I think next is just uh, getting the rest of the saddles on, soldering up a couple of bits, and uh, we're golden. So as you can see, one can never be too confident. Soldering this to the trim claw is extremely tricky because it's essentially a big heat sink, and it takes a lot of heat to melt that solder in there. And I wanna just get that solder to penetrate because that's your ground. Bit of a pain, but it's right.
some guys with uh, soldering too. Um, you know, maybe I'm not the guy to give anybody advice on soldering. You know, we all kind of pick up our different methods over time. But I found that as long as you have good heat in a clean area, just like welding, if there's any welders out there, they can, you know, attest to this, that if you have a clean area and proper heat, you'll have a nice solder joint. You just gotta be patient. Let that solder do its job. It don't take much. There you go. Okay, we're down to the last two screws and we got a guitar. Let's see what I have in this junk bin here. Looking pretty sweet. It's uh, comfortable. Neck shape is a little thicker than my 59, kind of after like a thicker C, almost a D shape. But uh, yeah, the guitar looks cool. I guess we gotta get some strings on it now and see how it plays. Shameless plug. I'm trying not to uh, edit too much out of this video so you guys can get an idea of, you know, sometimes we think like, uh, you know, putting a pick guard assembly on or, or you know, doing certain things is, is out of, out of our realm of, of understanding. And sometimes it's, it's just, I know with me, sometimes it's seeing it done, uh, helps me have a better understanding. And, um, you know, so maybe this will take some of the stigma out of maybe, you know, being afraid to work on your own stuff or, you know, watching some online tutorials on how to solder or how to center a neck. I do things like that, you know. Even stringing guitars. I know people that they don't string their own guitars. They take them to the guitar shop every time they need a set of strings put on. And to me, you know, get your hands in there. Get dirty with it. Technical term. Also, again, if you're on my Instagram um if you're not following me on Instagram, please go ahead and uh, subscribe, uh, follow my Instagram. I'm always trying to follow people back, and I'm always trying to see what everybody else is cooking in the tone department. But I posted a, a little video today about taking the paint off of the trim block. I know it, it sounds funny, but I feel like there's a lot of tone in there in the all oh, steel trim blocks, you know? The trim block I used with this custom shop setup was a, a trim block, an Eric Johnson trim block. I really, uh, I really like those. So, now keep in mind this is a little tricky because it's left-handed headstock, so you kind of wrap the strings around the opposite way, but you still get the same effect. I'll be damned if we, I think I nailed the, the center line of the neck first shot. It's pretty cool. Playing a lot of gigs too, you kind of figure out a way to get your guitars kind of strung up real quick. Yeah, we're looking pretty straight as far as See, so this is how I center a neck. I'll look at the, I'll look at the space from each, the amount of how much each E string is hanging near the fretboard, and this one looks pretty good so far. We haven't set intonation yet, so that might change. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this strung up, and report back.
I really enjoy when you get right to where you need to be before you find out that the height adjustment screw is stripped out. It's always a good time. I think these are old saddles, that's why. These are vintage saddles, so maybe the mojo from the saddles will transfer to the new ones. It's really what it's all about, the mojo. I like it. The bar is, I mean, the, the bridge is flush to the body, but it's a little light on the, the whammy bar. So I'm not gonna add another screw in. I'm just gonna. I can deal with that. Again, not, not shameless plugging these Kurt Mangan strings, but I noticed that I don't have to stretch them for like two hours either. <laughs> pickups are actually reverse wound there was a quick video assembling a parts caster it's a king tone neck mjt body 1960 uh complete pit guard assembly and a custom shop bridge but i'm gonna work the kinks out of this really dial it in i'll do a better video on it once it's done i'm probably gonna start playing this a little more because i just want to have some different sounds i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you can apply it to some of your guitar maintenance and uh see it wasn't so bad Talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right, guys. So I was able to find that the bridge pickup was a different polarity than the other two. Um, got that straightened out. Stretched the, st the strings out really good and intonated the guitar. Balanced the pickups a little bit with some adjustment. It's pretty cool. It's got its own little... <laughs> really cool kind of tension thing going on because the low E is so long um, and it's just coming into its own I'm gonna play it a lot play it as much as I can uh, it's a really cool guitar we've got it all straightened out and I'm happy to have some new tones <laughs> Like with anything, 
to, you know, you got to get used to it. So these, these frets are actually taller than what I'm used to and wider. So it's kind of cool. I can uh, put a lot of life into them. Like I said, the neck was a king toe neck built by Jesse Davey, heavily flamed, uh, ebony fingerboard with 6,000 fret wire. The body was a uh, vintage cut spec MJT, finished in candy apple red. The bridge assembly was a Fender custom shop that I had, kind of pieced it together with a uh, an Eric Johnson steel block in the back for the trem claw uh, for the for the tremolo system. We got an old 66, 67 neck plate, and the electronics and the pit guard and all that is entirely 1960. So it's got some pre CBS, some custom shop. You know, some aftermarket with the MJT, and it's got a great, solid, fat king toe neck. When looking for an old guitar, an old Stratocaster especially, as far as tone goes, I'm a stickler for the neck, the body, the bridge, and the electronics being all there. As long as those components are all there, I don't mind if the guitar's got a small route or the pit guard's been changed, but if we're going for just tone and not value or anything like that, I'll always try to find something with that. So here we are with the parts caster, uh, really easy, you know, hopefully the video can kind of give you guys the confidence to wrench on your own guitars. Um, do, it, do it all at your own risk, because I don't want to be responsible for anybody breaking anything. But yeah, it's uh, my backup strat. Uh, I've got two strats now, and we're going to have some fun with this one. If you dig these kind of videos that I'm doing, uh, please be kind, hit the subscribe button down below, turn your notifications bell on. Any likes, comments, suggestions, leave them down below for a future video, and I hope to talk to you guys real soon. See ya.